is Michael Martin, and I'll be chairing tonight's Mill Creek Township Zoning Hearing Board meeting. To my far right is our court reporter, Cecilia Mahana. To my immediate right is Bob Tanner, board member. To my left is Regina Smith. At the first table down here is Scott Calhoun, alternate board member. Uh, the table down there with the Steeler mask on is perhaps our board solicitor. And in the green, Chris uh, Julia, you're representing the township tonight? Yes. We have Julia Maggio representing the township, and Matt Hood is representing the township. Uh, we're going to take our cases in the order in which they appear on the agenda. We had a sign-up sheet in the back of the room. We asked that everybody present sign in so we have a record who was in attendance. Uh, when your case is heard, we're going to ask you to come forward and speak uh, at the podium over there if you're in the room. Otherwise, we'll take testimony over the phone. Uh, any material shown to us, we must keep for a period of 60 days. We do have up to 45 days after close of testimony to render any and all decisions. Typically, we will try to make decisions tonight. And uh, if you don't want to wait until after uh, the meeting to find out how we decide a case, you can call the zoning office after 8.30 tomorrow morning. That being said, I'd like to ask everybody to stand and be sworn in. Mr. Doherty, this is also for you as well. Do you swear to tell the truth, okay. the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, thank you. Our first appeal is 20-15, Benjamin Doherty, for property located at 4610 West 38th Street, asking for a height variance to construct a 20-foot high detached garage in the R1 single-family residential district. So, Mr. Doherty, we're going to ask you to tell us and re uh, what your request is about. Okay, uh, first I want to say thank you guys for having me. Um, so, correct, I live at 4610 West 38th Street. Um, I want to construct a 30 by 40 pole barn. Uh, right now we're, we're, we're tight on uh, space as far as storage. I have four kids, and, and we want to obviously have some, another place to store our, some of our belongings um, to free up some space in the house. With that being said, um, I, you know, my wife and I, our dream or our goal, what, we already, what we've always talked about is to have an RV for our kids when they get older, when they're out of the house to travel the country. So I just figured while I'm doing this, um, when I was reading the guidelines and things, um, or, the, or the zoning, um, the book, just to see, I see that you can go up to 20, 20 feet. So I figure if we're going to do that and put the money into it now, why not ask to go to that uh, maximum height of 20 feet? Um, so it would be a 30 by 40 by 14 that would give me a maximum height um, or a sidewall height of 14 feet where, you know, the average uh, RVs, uh, you know, 13, you know, between 11 and, I guess, 14 foot. Um, I do live in R1 zoning. I, I do not live in a subdivision. Um, I have two acres of property. Uh, I, you know, you can barely see, I can, I can barely see any houses around me right now, so it's, it's not like it'd be going up. In a, in a subdivision or, or something like that. So I am just asking for an additional four feet that will help me uh, achieve our goal as a family rather than putting this, you know, spending this money on this building now and then and down the road having to, you know what, I don't have room to store it and, and I got to, you know, find another alternative. So that's kind of the summary. If you guys have any specific questions, I'd be glad to answer them as well. Yeah, one thing I don't see on here, I mean, I see the plans for the pole building. Where is the location of this on the property? So the location is, it is on the, uh, I want to say the east, I'm sorry, the west side of the house. So it's on the west side of the house, um, butting up against, you know, it's, it would be two feet, at least two feet from the property line and 10 foot from the house. So closer to thir closer to Asbury, on right on my property line, two feet away from my neighbor's property line. So what I, I'm looking at an aerial photo. So when you pull in the driveway and go into your existing garage, you'll extend that driveway past the rear of the home to get to this? No, actually, I'm not going to have a driveway. Okay. Right now, I'm not. I will. I'm not putting the driveway in right now. Okay. 
Okay, did I hear you say you're going to be two feet from the property line? Yes. Uh, I don't believe that meets setback requirements. Mr. Coons? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, for detached accessory structures in residential districts, they're permitted to be up as close as two feet to the property uh, side or rear property line. Really? Okay. okay. The other thing I heard you say in your testimony that you uh, read 20 feet being the allowed height. Actually, I believe the allowed height is 16 feet. Well, I, 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 you're, you're correct. I misspoke. I, I know that with an RV, you can go up to 20 feet. And with that being our goal, I figured file a variance now to plan for the future to get that 20 foot so we would be ready to go. Because I need the space now, so I'm going to put it in now. But I just figured I could avoid another step down the road by by doing this now and getting that four foot exception. Okay, our solicitor has a okay. question, Mr. Barton. Mr. Barton, I think Matt, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the problem here is that he doesn't yet own the mobile home or the motor home because the ordinance seems to say, if it's quoted correctly in the application, I think it is, that the default height permission is 16 feet, but you can go to 20 to store a motor home provided you provide written confirmation of the registration of the motor home and written confirmation of its maximum height. Uh, is that correct? That is correct. And since, since Mr. Doherty hasn't bought the mobile home motor home yet, uh, he can't do that. He can't provide the written confirmation. He wants to build a building in anticipation of having a motor home that will conform to the ordinance and, and authorize by virtue of its size, a 20-foot ceiling, but he can't do that because he hasn't bought it yet. That's the problem, right? Correct. Okay, I thought so. Mm -hmm. See, if it's done, and if you look at the bottom of the front page of the app, you'll see it's been, it's quoted in handwriting down there, the, what the ordinance says. So I assume it's accurate. To, right, if he had a registration, we wouldn't be here. He would just right, be granted. Right. Yeah, if he buys, if he buys the motor home he's anticipating buying mm -hmm. and, and then builds it, He'd be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, to which point I would ask Mr. Doherty, when do you anticipate getting this thing? And, and I'm sorry, uh, when, I, when, I, I didn't. I, I didn't really hear a lot of that okay. over the phone. Mr. I Mr. Mr. Doherty, when do you anticipate it. buying the mo the motor home? In the next three years. Okay. So nothing in the near future. Let me ask you this: If this request was denied, what would you do? I, I don't know if I'd be able to go forward with it. I don't know. I mean, I, I'd want to. I would want to take care of two issues at once, and it's going to be a lot of money. So, I don't know what I would do. I don't. I don't have an answer for that. Okay. My next question: Are you going to have I, any utilities servicing this? No. No. Uh, no. Just. I'm sorry. Electric. Just electric. Just electric. And, and no. Yeah. No uh, infrastructure for potential living quarters or anything down the road? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. And, yeah, and, and you know what, to, you, to your point, I just want to add, like, I, yeah, you're right. I could have went out and, you know, bought a junk motor home or whatever and had it registered just to, but I wanted to do the right thing, and I figured this is the way to go about it. Because to, to whoever said something, if it, you know, if I had one registered, I wouldn't have to do this, but I just, I want to do it the right way. No question, thanks. Does anybody in the audience have any other questions? Now, what we're, now, because we're in kind of a unique position tonight with only one phone, uh, we're going to ask if anybody who may be watching and or listening to this, they can call in. And Matt, do they know the number to call? Uh, it's 833-1111, extension 380. Can I so send the it? extension 380? with the 833-1111 number. And again, that's the 830 bridge. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. We, we have tons of phones here. We have cell phones here, like Matt has one and Matt has one and so forth. Um, could we not, since you're online with your comments, could we not ask if anybody out there wants to say something about this case, call maybe Matt's cell phone or some, well, somebody's cell phone. Um, 
And if we don't, get, that way we wouldn't have to break the connection. That's with. true. Uh, I, how about I call Mr. Doherty on my cell phone and then the public can call on the phone? Yeah, yeah, that outside. works too. That works okay. too. Just a suggestion. Now, now, again, before I lose Mr. Doherty, though, I do want to go back and confirm one thing. Uh, and this was to Mr. Tanner's question. It was, he asked uh, if you had a specific location. So you really don't have the specific location. You're just saying it's going to be outside of the uh, two foot. I'm sorry. I, I, I have a specific location. It's already marked off. Um, I guess I don't have, I don't know how I would be able to, to you know, illustrate that to you over the phone. Um, that, that's okay. But, I, we, we just want to make sure that if you put it in the wrong spot, you, you could be in violation and have a problem later on. So as long as when you go to build this, you, you meet the requirements. Um, yes, yes, I, yes. Yeah. Now, I, 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 had, I had a tough time hearing a couple questions or comments. Two feet is still allowed, right? Because that's what I was told, two feet from the property line? That's what Mr. Cruz yes. is saying. That is yes. correct. Then, then yes, yes. Then, then I have a spot and it's drawn out and it meets everything that, uh, he and I had discussed over over the phone and email. Now, have you spoken to any of your neighbors? I have. I have. Yes, one of them. Because I said, if, if I understand this, you, you would be looking at this location being abutting the Conley and the Yeager properties. Is that correct? No. Um, well, I don't. I don't really. I don't know my neighbors. Um, the one, the one that lives next to me, where like the swamp land is, I've I've never seen him or talked to him. Um, but in the in the one on the other side of me is a subdivision. There's like four, you know, four, three or four houses that butt up up against my tree line. Um, I don't know them by name, but but no, I haven't, you know, talked to anybody about this. I I talked to my Ziola across the street about it, and that was the only one. How are you going to access this from your driveway then? On, on via the grass? Okay. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So, okay. okay. Matt, you're going to bring your phone up and you're going to. So, what I'm, Mr. Doherty, what I'm going to ask is we're going to disconnect from you. We're going to ask anybody who may be listening or watching to call in again that 833 111 number. Four ones again, and that was eight three zero. Three eight zero. Pardon my dyslexia. Uh, so we're gonna uh, get you on another line and uh, see if there's any calls. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So this line is now available. This line is now available. So we'll see, give a few minutes and a minute or two. Is that a call yeah. for us? Milk Creek Zoning Hearing Board. The bottom, it's the one underneath it. Yeah. Milk Creek Zoning Hearing Board. Hello. 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 Is there anybody there? You know what? That might be me when I transferred over to pick up Matt's call. I don't know if it rang Doherty again. again. I guess Mr. Doherty again. Okay. okay. Well, we'll do something here. We need to get rid of them. Hello? Hello? Didn't get rid of anybody that way. I'm glad you're doing this and not me. This is technology at its finest. <laughs> Again, we're 833-1111-380 is the extension if anybody wants to call in. I'm so tired of this. The green button at the top, right? Uh, yes. Good evening. Hello. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, hello. My name is Tom Menarchek. Okay. And could we have your address, please, sir? It's uh, 4587 Pine View Court. Okay. And you're calling in reference to uh, Mr. Doherty's request for a variance? Yes, here, let me turn down my feed on the computer. Um, 
Uh, I'm calling about the variance hearing on the property on 38th Street. Correct. Okay. Tell us what you'd like to have on the record. Well, a couple of things, and Mr. Perhax already pointed this out. Um, the variance is allowed specifically to go to 20 feet if, in fact, they own a motorhome. And I think um, the petitioner said that he planned to buy a motorhome within the next several years. I don't think that presents a hardship to grant a variance. And once the variance is granted, he doesn't have to buy the motorhome at all. Um, and he can use that building for whatever he sees fit to use it for. The other thing that, that bothers me about this is they purchased this property in September of 2017. Um, if it was not going to be suitable for their needs, um, they should have made that decision back in 2017. They didn't. Um, it's a short amount of time um, to decide to build a 1,200-square-foot garage. There's already an existing 600-square-foot garage on the property. Um, and I, I couldn't quite understand. I'm, I live... I, got, I abut part of his tree line to the east of his property and pretty well north of where his home is. But if the garage is going to be on 38th Street, I'm less concerned because the, the house will block my view. Uh, but if it's going to be further back from 38th Street, it, it will come into view from where we're at. And there's about four homes in the White Pine subdivision that abut uh, the subject petitioner's property. That's my only point. Okay. So you're in support of or opposed to us granting this request? I'm opposed to it. Okay. Mr. Doherty, do you have any comments to his uh, statements? Uh, yeah, I do. So I guess... First things first, um, when we moved into that house, my kids were much younger. Uh, my kids are very involved in a lot of things, a lot of sports, a lot of activities. So I get it. I mean, everybody buys a house and they want more room. Okay. Doesn't, I don't think that makes me a bad guy. I think if I can do it and have a nice place to store some of my items, so I have more room in the house, I think I should be allowed to do that. Um, Second question or second comment I want to make is I don't know where your house is located at, but I again I'd have to go and measure it from the street. But what it's going to do it's it's going to start right around the north the, the the north of my house the edge the edge of my house on the north side and it's going to extend you know 40 feet. So I don't know where that puts you at, but it's not going to be in, on the back of my property. It's going to be aligned right on the edge where my where my house ends on the north side. That's where that's where it would start. Um, and and again, I you know, I just to be honest with you, I I, I, I see your point, but I I get sick of looking at a, a, a roof with a tarp on it. You know, that's that's falling apart and, and trucks in the so. You know, this would help alleviate some of that on me so I don't have to see that on my back window. It's, it's, I'm going to make it nice. Um, everything, my, my property is well maintained. My house is well maintained. I try to, you know, do the right thing and I would do the same for this. But I, I do understand your concern. I don't know if that, um, where, I, where I'm positioning it, positioning it will help you um, so you can still, you know, see. But, Really, if, where my pole barn, if it's not there, you're, you're looking at a tiny bit of woods and then there's 38th Street. But, th but that's all uh, I have my, to say. My, o my only comment is, it's my understanding that he could build the same thing, but I only have a 16-foot ceiling height, and there would be no question that he could do this. So... <coughs> The goal is to store more personal items, a boat, snowmobiles, whatever that happens to be. 
he can do that with a, a garage that's 16 feet tall. It doesn't need to be 20 feet tall. The only reason it needs to be 20 feet tall is the thought that I might buy an RV in the future. And my problem is that, you know, you've got a chicken or the egg problem, and that's not the way the ordinance is written. With, with all due respect, um, you're right, but I'm, I, I want the variance because I, I want to store an RV in there. With I, I can go out and buy an RV that doesn't run, that's registered, and and I wouldn't, I wouldn't, we wouldn't have to go through this. But if I have a, a registered RV, then I'd be able to build a pole barn. Again, I'm just saying I'm trying to do the right thing. You're right. You know what? I don't know what's going to happen in two years. I don't know where my financials are going to be in this crisis if I'm going to lose my job. And you're right. Maybe it takes longer than that based on money. I don't know. I hope not. But again, to my point, if I'm going to build it, I just want to be able to accommodate it down the road when I go buy an RV big enough so I can store it in there in the winters or even in the summers when it's not in use. But I respect, I respect your um, opinion. Okay. I really do. Mr. Perhax, you have a comment or a question? I have a, I have a question for Mr. Doherty. Um, Mr. Doherty, I'm looking at the, um, the aerial view of your property which shows the cul-de-sac that Mr. Menarchik lives on and 38th Street in your home. And uh, your, your, your property is pretty large. I think your application indicates it's about two acres. I can't tell from the photograph the topography, but my recollection of the neighborhood there having lived in Mill Creek for a good many years is that it's relatively flat. Um, is there some reason why you are butting it up so close to the property line that um, uh, the people with the uh, White Pine subdivision share with you as opposed to locating this structure farther back in your lot or farther to the west? Because you've got, look, from the photograph, you have tons of room. Uh, that might alleviate some of Mr. Menarchik's concerns. And we're a little bit handicapped because you haven't, and you're not obligated to, but you haven't told us exactly where you're putting this thing visually so we can see it. So I'm taking you at your word that you're gonna put it two feet from the east property line, which you know the ordinance allows you to do that. There's no question about that. You can put your 16 foot tall building there tomorrow without any action by this board at all. I understand that. Uh, but I'm just curious as to why, why there and not a little bit farther away from your neighbors. No, that's, that's, a, that's a great question. And actually, my wife and I went back and forth on this. Um, so to the south of me, closer to 38th Street, right behind my house, it would take up, you literally walk out of my porch and then there'd be a, a pole barn, boom. Like we'd be staring out of our kitchen and out, you know, so there, there, there'd really be no yard there. It'd just be a pole barn. Well, you've got two um, acres. I mean, I mean, I'm looking at the picture. I mean, why would, why would you walk out of the place and, right into the pole barn, and not unless you put it there. I mean, there's plenty of room well, there. No, Ms. Mr. Well, Doherty, could I, uh, my understanding is you were putting it two feet off the west property line, is that correct? That is correct. Oh, I thought it was the east one. No. Well, White Pine, oh, Mr. Menarchik's home is on the opposite side of his lot. Mr. Menarchik's home is to the north, is what he stated. It's in Pine. It, it, no, it's- It'd be on the northwest, the northwest of the house. Mr. Menarchik is calling about Pine View Court. Oh, I'm looking at Cedarwood Court. Right, okay. that's Pinewood Court. Okay. So, okay. so this okay. is as far from Mr. Menarchik's property as it could possibly be. Okay, then, then my question is, it doesn't matter. So mm -hmm. thank you, I'm sorry yeah. I took up your time. Okay. Yeah, I had the wrong, uh, wrong name of the street. Okay, sorry. Okay. So, so Mr. Menarchik, do you have any other comment? And we have on record the fact that you're opposed to this. Yeah, my, my only comment is this. If he hasn't placed in the application where this is going to go exactly, then it might be close to my property. I don't know that. Um, and, and that's the problem as well. If this was staked out, this is where it's going to be, um, that's one thing. But 
I, I don't know where that's going to really end up with, and that's why I was having a problem with it. Right now in the summertime with the leaves all up, you know, there, it's, it's difficult for me to see to Mr. Dari's house. In the wintertime, it's not so, it's not so hard because the leaves are all down, and I have a pretty good shot um, from, from my home to look at that. And again, I appreciate that it, it's not going to be a pole barn. It's going to be, I understand, it's going to be a wood-constructed garage, so that looks a little bit better than a pole barn. Um, but again, it's 20 feet tall. Uh, a standard home is a little taller than that, you know, and that's or a little... You know, is almost that height, so it's going to be another home on this property. Is what it's going to look like. So that's my only comment. Thank you for your time. Um, uh, can, I add, can, I, can I add something, sir? Uh, it's staked out. It's I haven't staked out. If, if you wanted to go and take a look, you're more than welcome to walk on the property to see. If, you know, if you're interested, I just want to throw it out there. Mr. Right. Doherty, one thing that, uh, this is Bob Tanner, one thing I would really need to see is, is where this is so there's no ambiguity in the future. Do you have this drawn to scale on a plot plan that you could even email to us right now? Um, I guess I don't because I was waiting to see if it was going to get approved. Um, but I can, uh, that, I can get that for you. I, unfortunately, I've been trying to get a hold of my contractor for the last you know, three weeks and it's just been hit and miss, but that's something I can definitely get for you. I, I just was unaware. I apologize. Okay. I didn't realize. Yeah. Would you be opposed to us continuing this case and presenting that document so that everybody in your neighbor could have an idea what's going on? Uh, and then we could uh, look at it at the next meeting. That would, um, that would keep I, this record open? I guess I wouldn't be opposed, but I just, I'm running into the issue that, when's the, when is the next meeting? Typically we have a meeting every month, and the next meeting then would be the last Wednesday in the month, in the month of July. And what is it um, that, that I would need to exactly, just so I know, I'm just, I'm, my only concern, and I'm not saying no, I'm not saying no to it, my only concern is, that it won't get done this year. Because uh, Matt and I, I missed a deadline on Matt. I was trying to get on the last the last agenda. And he keeps putting me back and putting other people in front of him. That is my only concern. But if it's something that I can get to you in the next day, so we don't have to wait a month, I would be glad to do that. But it doesn't sound like that'll work. Well, we can only make a decision at a meeting. Our, our concern here is on your behalf. Um, if we don't have a document that shows where it goes, you could, by rights, to your point, put it two feet off any property line, and I can speak for myself that my decision is impacted greatly upon the location of the structure. Okay, so it's important to me on where this goes based upon what my feelings are. And obviously your neighbors would certainly care about that a lot. So uh, I think it would be very important to show some sort of document in scale relative to the home. Okay. Okay. So, so what I, so, and I apologize, it's been a while. What I got, what I handed in you guys, that's not, you, you, you want to know the exact footage from the street, from the property line, from the house and all that, right? The, the answer to that is yes. yes. Okay. And, and what that would do is that would also allow the uh, fears or concerns of your neighbors who are right now opposed to this. Okay. Because right now we have a yeah, document no. that shows what it looks like, which is, okay, you know, the structure of it, which is great, but we have no documentation of where it's going to be located. And you would need that for a zoning permit anyways, correct? Building so permit. this is something you're going to have to do at some point anyways. Okay, yeah, that's, that's fine. I'll, uh, we can do that. Okay, so what, what we'll do then, uh, and we'll leave the record open uh, for this document to be presented to the township. And you can bring that in any time between now and uh, the next okay. meeting. But I would also recommend you work it out with your neighbors uh, to see if you can come to some agreement. And uh, what, uh, what I'm also gonna do then is uh, see if there's anybody else looking to call in. 
see if there's any other comments. Okay. Does that work for both of you at this point? Yeah, that's yeah, fine with me. The, clo the, yeah, the, the closer it is to 38th Street and the closer it is to his west line, the farther it is from my line of sight. Okay, so what we're asking to have happen now is uh, Mr. Doherty will put the location plot plan together. He'll share with the township that we, as a zoning board, can review next month, and you, it'll be shared with you as well. So with that being said, I'll, I'll, I'll let you go, and I'll keep Mr. Doherty on the phone, and see if anybody else has an interest in calling into this. Okay, I, okay I, Mr. Per Mr. Prax, you have other questions? Yeah, yeah, if I may, you might want to just remind these, these two folks that next month's meeting will probably be a live meeting and won't be call in, I, I think. Is that, that's the anticipation. So if this case is continued to next month, which it's going to be, it looks like um, you're talking about physically coming to the township building and not, not, not doing this remotely. I just wanted to remind them of that because that, the only reason we're doing it tonight is because it was, it was advertised that way. So it's kind of some of, some people were here live, some people were not, but going forward, it's probably gonna be all live. So the advertisement will say that next month. Okay, and did you both hear that? I did not. I heard a bit of it. Okay, in effect, next month's meeting, you'll have to be present to present this. And, and the only thing, and we're going to keep the record open, and the only thing we're going to keep the record open for and for testimony is for this location. So you have to come in, you'll have to come in and actually present that, and uh, then from there we'll go, uh, hopefully make some decisions. Okay, that works for me. So don't hang up yet, Mr. Doherty. We're going to see if anybody else wants to talk. Okay. I'll hang up. All right, thank, thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Again, it's 833-1111, and I believe it's 380 is the extension. I don't see any red light. I don't see anything going at this point, so what I... I'll, um, I'll move on to the next appeal, and Mr. Doherty, we appreciate your time on the phone this evening. Okay? All right, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Okay. Bye now. Bye-bye. Okay, our next appeal is Appeal 20-16, William Scott Redinger for property located at 5053 Sir Hugh Drive, asking for a dimensional variance to construct a pool and a deck within 50 feet of top of a bank of a water course in RR Rural Residential District. And this is being presented, I believe, tonight. Yes, sir, please go to the podium, give us your name and address, and tell us what you want to do. Hello, I'm William Redinger. I go by Scott, my middle name. My wife, Cindy. Um, we both live at the residence 5053, sir, you as you described. We've lived there for just about 25 years. Um, we love the place. Uh, in fact, uh, funny story, I guess, is you know we had friends that used to live a few doors down, and we were at their house one time many years ago. And I said, "Man, I really like that house in the corner." And he said, "Who owned?" I asked him who owned it, and he gave me the guy's name. So I knocked on his door and I said, "Hey, if you ever want to sell your house, please give me a call." And I gave him my number. And a year and a half later, my phone rang, and, and we bought the house. It's like it's kind of it's kind of interesting, you know. You don't hear that happen very often, but it did. And, so we love the place, and uh, but now I'm retired. Uh, my wife is working part time, probably soon to retire. And we got grandkids coming soon, and we really want a pool. She especially wants a pool, and uh, we're at the point where uh, you know we have to redo our deck. The deck's been there, you know, as long as we have, so uh, it needs it needs redone. And you know that that whole subdivision was built in roughly 1984 to 86 range. I think probably long before the ordinances in question were in effect. Um, you know, there are many homes in the area there that have structure. My neighbor's house is probably 10, 12 feet from the bank itself. Um, in, in my yard, it's a little tough to tell where the bank is. So uh, Mr. Puz was uh, gracious enough to come out and help me make an assessment of where, and we agreed, or, or where we think the actual, you know, top of the bank is. And then I drew the plot plan, the updated plot plan that you see. Uh, if, hopefully you have those with you there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there are three sketches, the original one that was on file 
and I updated that to what the current situation is because it's not, the one on file is not correct. There's uh, the deck and sunroom that have been there for 25 years. Uh, and then, uh, and then the proposed plan as well. So if you have those, uh, we can uh, discuss uh, from there. Um, I would like to add, let's say a few things though. Um, you know, we've, you know we've, we've lived there 25 years and that bank that we're on is very, very solid. There is nothing, it hasn't moved at all. There's no erosion going on. There's, there's mature trees, you know, it's hard clean <coughs> soil. It's, it's solid, it, it, in my opinion. Whatever that's worth, there's not a lot to worry about here. Um, you know, we, we want to, we, we want this pool, um, and, and it's consistent, I, I believe, with uh, other other homes in the neighborhood. There are a number of pools. I'll give you a couple of addresses there, um, where the pools are close to the bank, and I, I think this is, in my opinion, a very reasonable request. Um, we've done. Uh, uh, accommodations already to, to make it as in, less impactful, as, as least impactful as possible. Uh, for example, we're going to a very small pool. What we've, what we've got quoted from Polly's pool and, and proposed is a, is a roughly 12 by, um, 12 by 25 or 27 foot pool. And the dimensions you see here, where I put the, for example, 27 feet plus six feet, they, they give you three feet of concrete around the perimeter of the pool. Before, before you get too far into this, because you submitted three different drawings. Yes. Can we agree which one we're going to take your testimony off of? And the one I'm recommending is the one that's identified as proposed variance dated 620. That is correct. That way, that way, because there's three different yes. drawings here that we're all on the same exactly. page. Exactly. The other, the, the first one was what's on file. The second one I provided only for, to update your records because, it, 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 you know, with the, you know, I drew that uh, to scale. Uh, and you know, I'm an engineer. I've made many drawings over my life, okay. so I think it's probably good enough. I just want to make sure we're all on the same yeah. page with this. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so uh, we've gotten quotes from Collie's Pool. Um, we've gotten a, a detailed sketch. Uh, I put a, a proposed sketch in here with some maximum and minimum dimensions relative to both the bank and the home. Um, and I put a tolerance on them, like I guess an engineer would on a normal drawing. But uh, for the top of the bank, I put plus or minus three feet because. What the last thing I want to have is, okay, we agree on something, we build it, and then an inspector comes out and says, oh, well, I think it's off by six inches. And, and it's all because the, you know, the bank is not, it's not. Let, let, let me go one step further though. We don't deal in plus or minus. We, we're gonna need specific dimensions that you're gonna ask us to request. So, and if it's, if it's a required 50 foot setback because of the bank, you're going to have to tell us specifically in feet and inches what you're doing because we can't do a plus or minus unfortunately in this case because we write a document that's legal and uh, and if it's incorrect you could have a problem yeah. after the fact sure no, you no. accept minimum Rich, no, if, I, if i may explain a little bit further the chairman's comment yeah. uh, mr Redinger, uh if you ask for a variance of x feet you don't have to use it all <laughs> but you need to ask for what you might need Correct. So if you're not sure to within three feet what you need, I'd suggest you ask for three feet more. <laughs> because no, okay, I, it, I has to, has, it has to be that specific. That's fine, great. And I, the only reason I put the plus or minus three feet is it's not because I'm unsure of where I think the top of the bank is or it's not because I'm unsure, unsure of what I'm proposing. It's only because I'm unsure of what somebody else might say the bank is. And that's why Mr. Puzz and I looked at it you know, in person to get a, a, an agreement of where we believe it is. That, that's why that's there. And I'll be glad to, you know, we can use the maximum dimension. Uh, or in this case, it would be the minimum dimension. 31.3 uh, or 31.5 minus 3 feet. We'll just, that way you've got a hard number. And it all back up when I build 28 it. 28.5. Yeah. 28.5 is what we're dealing with. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you for that clarification. I'll, uh, I'll make sure I would stay, I'd stay, you know, for my own benefit, I'm going to stay away from that. I understand. In case there's any question about where the bank actually is. The big thing though is you are keeping, it appears, the exact same proximity line as what you have right now. Is that correct? That's my intent. And that was, in fact, um, one of our early concessions. I thought, well, I'd love to have the pool. I'd love to move 10 feet closer because that's where the sun is uh, mm -hmm. and that's where the best view is. Um, but realize from a practical standpoint, and I'm a pretty practical person, I want to be realistic and say, okay, I don't want to try to push the issue. I think we're better off. We can live with where it is. 
I made it as small as possible. 12 by 25 or 26 is 27 in fact. There's a not a big pool. It's pretty small actually. Uh, in fact, I, I got those dimensions from uh, my neighbor's pool down the street and I thought, wow, that's kind of the smallest in-ground pool I've, I've seen, but it's great. I love it. And it's like, that's exactly what we need to put in our yard uh, for our future. Um, so that's how we came about to those dimensions. Okay. So basically you're asking us to consider a, a 28 and a half foot variance from the blob. Or yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And that's the only thing we're here to hear, right, Matt? And Julie, that's... Yeah. Okay. I think so. Okay, so we understand that. Is there any questions from the board at this point? Is there any questions from the solicitor? No. Now we're looking at the township solicitor now. Oh. Okay. Yeah, they do have some. Um, so when they do name and address. Yes, uh, Lydia Caparosa. Um, McDonald's, um, our address is 100 State, Suite 700. Um, they are the PA for the That's fine. Yes. Um, I met Hudson the other day whenever I came out with the township to um, visit your property. And I agree, it's a lovely location that you both have. Uh, I just have a couple of questions uh, for purposes of clarifying based on what we observed out at the property and based on the application. Mm -hmm. And I do have some additional testimony from the township. Um, but on your application, um, you, in your historic, I guess your updated version, so your okay. second, or your first drawing rather, um, it doesn't include the hot tub on it, is that correct? Is the hot tub, Further out, this isn't. Super no, the hot tub is within the proximity line of the of the deck. Of the original. Yeah, it's the, just it's just the on the deck. deck. Yeah. Okay, yes. that's I just wasn't a hundred percent sure based yes. on the drawings. And you said that the depth of the pool, at least when we met, I believe it was a three and a half foot, five foot depth. Three and a half feet on one end, five and a half on the other. Uh, it won't be totally excavated because the, the, the yard does slope about two feet across that dimension. So uh, I did some calculations and I expect the excavation for the pool to be about 600 cubic feet, very roughly, but that's my estimation, compared to the home, which is 13,000 square feet. So the home is more than 20 times the size of the pool <coughs> from a volume of excavation standpoint. And will the, where will the deep end of the pool be? Will it be closer to Walnut Creek? Yes. Any possibility that you could flip it such that the three feet is closer to the creek and then the five foot is deeper or um, further away? It would make it difficult to access from the home uh, because that's, you want to access from the shallow end and, and that's, where, that's where the steps are and that's where the doors are. It really is not possible. Plus, I think with the slope, it would, it would be better to have the, the deeper end towards uh, at the bottom of the slope. And who is installing? I know you said Collie's Pool. Are they Collie's doing pool. the excavation? Yes. Yes, they are. And have they expressed any concerns regarding excavating so close to the bank? No. No, they have not. And, um, and they've, they've gone through the aerial views and then they've looked at it uh, closely. So. And the, I guess the, I'm, I'm, I don't want to assume, but with that 12 plus 6, that's, um, 18 for the whole width of the pool, including the deck? Correct. That's um, including the concrete around the... Um, and that's what I mean, the pool deck. Yeah, so the um, so basically where it says, if you look where it says patio, part of that is currently deck today. So mm -hmm. yes, to answer your question as best I can, I think the answer is yes. Okay. Because you're going to have what was deck and now patio and then pool. So it's okay. adjacent to the existing deck future so if you're moving from the home to where the furthest end of the pool is, how deep is that going to be? Is that 36 feet or is it 
Because it's 12 feet plus 6 feet plus it's 18. 36 from the home. So yeah, 36, okay. Plus, plus 18, yeah. Um, and the proposed pool, the 12, the, or I guess the 18 feet, does that include, is it excavating wider than that? No, the excavation probably is actually less than that. It would be the 12 feet. The 6 okay. is just a concrete pad. Uh, there's probably minimal excavation involved with that, but it's uh, probably actually none. There's a few inches of gravel. <coughs> concrete. And I know you've lived at the home for a while now. What, what is your understanding of the type of soil or material where you'll be excavating at? Well, I can tell you, I had rotator cuff surgery last year because I tried digging a ditch through it, uh, and uh, it didn't go very well. I had to put some drainage uh, <laughs> between my house and my neighbors, so I'm still recovering from rotator cuff surgery, trying to swing a pickaxe into the clay. Uh, it's hard stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to show you a couple of photos that we took at your property today, sure. and I just want you to confirm where certain things are. Sure. I have copies for the board as well. How do you want to identify these? Exhibit A or A is fine with me. Okay, okay, just so, again, so we have an understanding for the record. And this, these are three photos that Matt Waldinger took at your property on mm -hmm. Tuesday when we were out in that brief time between the rain. Um, the fence post on the first photo. <coughs> Is that sort of the edge of your property before it starts to drop towards the creek? Uh, yeah, it's a gentle slope, and then a, a more uh, pronounced slope, and then and then the bank that's beyond that. So the gentle slope is in the grassy area, and Correct. then beyond the fence is a little bit more steep. Correct. And that's um, and the pool. Are you keeping the hot tub, or is the hot tub? The hot tub. Uh, probably going to move that uh, over. Towards the other side, okay. other, further away from the, uh, okay. it's out of question. So it's further away from the creek, and it'll be probably 50 feet or more out. It'll be on the patio by the house, okay. if at all. And then it's hard to sort of tell, but there's the, where your current deck is and the hot tub is, the line that you're not going beyond is that deck. Yes, it's not exactly um, the, uh, you see that small, uh, the deck has a kind of a 45, right? That, that mm -hmm. don't, the portion you see is not exactly parallel to the creek. Okay. It's close, not exactly. Mm -hmm. That's why the, the closest point is the furthest point that you see. Let me show you on your document. Oh, this point right here is the closest point. And I'll show you gentlemen up here and ladies if that's acceptable. This point here is the closest point. This is Close to parallel to the creek, but not quite. In fact, as you come this direction, you're moving a little further away from the bank. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Could you explain to me? Uh, we want to speak up, Bob, so everybody can hear us. Sure. Uh, what I'm looking for an explanation is the way this currently shows, I'm seeing this edge of the deck, right, the 45 degree angle. Yes, that is that small portion that you see. Here. Again, speak up because she's got to get this on. Recording and the solicitor, I'm sure, would like to know what's being set up here as well. <laughs> Where's the hot tub on this? This is the this is the updated drawing. No, the hot tub would be right. It's not. It, it actually extends so past that. But at this, it, no, it doesn't come past this. The hot tub is sitting right about there. Okay. okay. Yeah, just for my, so, yeah. I was trying to understand how that all came together because it's only showing six feet wide here. Yeah. But the point yeah, is the hot tub in the photo is not shown on the updated. Correct, I didn't think it was all that relevant, but okay, you're okay. absolutely right. Don't know that it is, I just, I see it in the photo, yeah. I just want to have an yeah, understanding. Just to be clear, the dock is not closer to the bank than the point of, on the deck that I point out. It is not closer. And that point, again, for the record, is on that 45 degree angle or so? Correct, I guess okay. you call that the furthest northeast point of that. Okay. okay. Or I guess that's east. That's all the questions I have for you at this time, Mr. Renninger. Sure. Um, I do have some additional testimony from uh, the township's engineer, Ann Sokol, and from Mr. Matt Waldinger.
Okay. I will be brief for you all on the board. Um, Ann Zopel. Ann, I'm gonna have you sit here, Ann. Before we get into your testimony, when did the zoning change for this 50 foot setback uh, from the bank? Okay, and then my next question, are you encroaching any further to the creek or the bank with what you're looking at doing? Absolutely not. Okay, so is, could this be considered a uh, preceding the ordinance, uh, a grandfathered in? The, the floodplain ordinance is a, uh, a separate standalone ordinance from the zoning ordinance. And uh, the definition of development is so broad under the FEMA regulations that pretty much anything is considered development. And in this case, the, the, the definition, or excuse me, it says it's in the ordinance, no new development. So any additional development, regardless, is not permitted within 50 feet of the bank. But he's not encroaching any further, okay? I just want to, I just want to get that clean in my own head. Yeah. Because if, because if, if he wasn't doing this, uh, uh, under FEMA, he'd be in violation right now because they changed something. But, okay, I'd like to hear the rest of the testimony then. We can share. Close to Anne. I won't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> I know you will. Um, could you please state your name for the record? Anne Sokol. And what is your current occupation? I'm the township engineer for Mill Creek Township. And how long have you been a township engineer? I've been the township engineer for about two and a half years. For 17 and a half prior to that, I was the assistant township engineer. I have. And is this a copy of that application? It is. And in reviewing the application, and in, as your, in your experience as a township engineer, do you have any concerns regarding the proposed installation of the pool? I do have some concerns, yes. And um, could you please elaborate on those concerns? Uh, the proximity, I know that you said that the top of the street bed is lower, but the top of the buildable property, you don't have a whole lot of room to get in there to get a pool of this size. Plus you have to over excavate for forming, for them to form it. And then you can bring it up and put your- A point of clarification, up. this is a fiberglass pool that doesn't, doesn't built that way. So they're gonna excavate it, they don't have to over excavate no. at all. No, no. Mm -hmm. And um, which I prepared this in our office. And before I knew that the uh, 18 foot width of the pool, I prepared it as a 36 or 30 foot and a half um, distance from the house. So it really would be a 36 foot distance mm -hmm. rather than the 30 foot and a half. Okay, so that's going to put it closer. And, uh, without having done that, the lines, I would think. Yeah, so. that'll put it just a little closer. Yeah, my, my problem is, okay, you say, and you can see, it's evident that there's a, a slight slope to your yard. What is your deepest elevation that you're gonna dig to? What is the depth closest point to the creek? Uh, roughly roughly uh, three feet. To the creek, and you don't have to go any lower than that. Uh, I'm not digging the pool, but my estimation based on the measurements I've taken is three feet. And what will hold up the rest of the pool from the push, the water pressure? The, Usually the, the ground soil. holds it in. Oh, well, the excavated soil is then going is to be, be built around it with a, uh, you know, stone, stone perimeter around that, so it looks nice. Okay, so you're going to All build this up basically around the pool. Uh, yeah, the excavation 
the moon's on the dirt, on the high end down below us. Yeah. Okay. And in addition to the, your concerns identified with the yeah. available property, what other concerns did you have concerning the in ground pool? Well, again, like you brought up, I was thinking if you put the three foot depth, the, the, the shallow end at that point, and I understand why you're not. Yes, ma'am. But uh, then you would have a, a less of an excavation. The excavation is my problem. Whether it's clay or not, this is Walnut Creek, mm -hmm. and it's an impaired creek. It's, uh, we have, through our MS4, program we have to reduce the pollutants mm -hmm. yeah, and the pollutant that walnut is being called out on is sediment from erosion now yours doesn't show a lot of evidence of erosion what are we going to call excuse me one second what are we going to call this we're going to call this exhibit b that's being distributed now. okay and um i mean there's not a lot of erosion here but sediment comes down while you're digging this building it up you know they have to control that sediment sure yeah Otherwise, I mean, that's more that we're going to have to take out. It's going to cost everybody money. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's great. And clay, soil, stuff like that. And you know this much better now. You're a township engineer, but that, um, yeah, you see a lot of a lot of erosion in clay and, and other kind, or not in clay, in, in sandy Sand. soil, stuff yeah. like that, where it's evident. And I like to hike the creek, so I, you know, I see areas where there's erosion in other places. There's a lot of erosion. Um, one at a time, please. Time. One at a time. Okay, so have you ever taken a measurement from the closest point to the top of bank? And what is your total measurement there existing as it is? And we're going to say that 45 degree angle that you described mm -hmm. would be the closest point of the That's floor. the exact dimension. That, that's the dimension that we have on record here in my proposed variance. That's the proximity line. Okay, to yeah. your fence. Uh, to the fence, I believe it's roughly within within two feet on my estimation here, so I did measure it, um, uh, but it's a little tricky. Um, 12 feet is, the, I think, the difference between the top of the bank and the fence. So it's an additional 12 feet down. So when I was talking with Mr. Mr. Puzz, I wasn't sure which dimension we're going to be using here, and he came out, and because at first I was thinking we'd have to use the fence as the top of the, um, top of the bank. Um, um, we agreed that's not the bank. The bank is down lower, and I think I defined it based on what we had uh, using a couple of trees. That uh, did I did I write that in the document there? There's a uh, an ash tree and a uh, um, a cottonwood tree that are basically right on that bank line that uh, that we had looked at. And so, and I defined it that way in case, for example, somebody an inspector comes out after we build the structure and they want to see what we used as the top of the bank. So we're, at least we have a definition and there should be no confusion as to which trees those are. It's, it's pretty obvious when you're there. Hmm. And with respect, Ms. Sobel, to the bank that was identified as the bank, that's lower, <coughs> this is the top bank board surface slope down, correct? Correct. And I agree with his assessment of the, the okay, stream bank yep. and the stream yep. bank. It's just the top of bank I mean, is that where you're going to fill in? Are you going to fill in beyond your fence? Oh no, no, we're not going to be anywhere near that fence. Uh, I don't want to disrupt. I don't want to disrupt my, my fence. We will actually have to replace that fence probably with a with a uh, one that meets pool spec. Mm -hmm. So I'll be putting a, another fence in there because this is just a split rail fence with. Uh, it, it's not going to meet a pool spec. So I will be replacing that, but that'll be uh, that'll be easy. You know, nothing intrusive, obviously. Okay, so you're telling me that you can put that size of a pool of fiberglass yes, with the yeah. surround in between the fence and the... And to clarify... Again, is, please speak up. This is the, this red line is the, um, it's 30 foot 6 inches, but it really would be 36 inches. This is the furthest corner of where the pool would be if you look at... This yes. No, wait, we, I don't. I don't on, really. Don't know where you guys are talking about right on now. On the proposed variance, 
mm -hmm. map. The furthest point of the pole on the proximity line, it's the corner of the pole is on the proximity line. And then on the exhibit B that I provided you, the length is not correct, I will admit, but the where the yellow meets the red is the end of the is the corner of where the pool would be. Is that correct, Mr. Redding? Because I thought what you indicated in your testimony was you weren't going to exceed anything that's already in existence. That is well, correct. Referring to if this is exhibit B with the old red and yellow line, is that correct? That's exhibit that's B. Correct. The pool the pool will not extend beyond the red line. That's the line. And members of the board, the red line is actually further. I based it on a 30 foot. It's really a 36 foot length, width rather. Well, I think the confusion is you're, even with that, you're stating the distance from the edge of the proposed pool to the top bank, 12 and a half feet, which we're saying it's even closer than that. And Mr. Redinger, you're saying it's 28.5 or 31.5. That's correct. Uh, so I think there's a difference in, are we talking a top bank and a lower bank? Matt, can you yeah. chime in? Yeah, you to come up there? Yeah, it'd be great. First of all, what does the ordinance require, top and bottom and whatever? 50 feet. Yeah. 50 feet, but from the top or lower the bank? So. It does not define top of bank. Okay. Um, so the top of bank, for my determination, is right here. Because that's okay. where the water, the water course is. Now, do you, do you agree with what, uh, you, want, you might want to come up and see what Matt's showing us as well, because I think it's different than what you're showing us on this drawing. So Matt, you and Mr. Redinger met on site, correct? Correct. correct. And you came to an agreement. Yeah, on what the, you're saying. Yeah, so Six top, feet, of bank, <laughs> top of the bank would be approximately, I think this is where the fence is right through the fence. One at a time, no, keep your voice, you whoa, 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 no, no, the reporter no. cannot get this. If you're going to all congregate up there, one at a time and keep your voice up, please. Okay. Uh, this, for my determination, the top of the bank is here. And when you're saying here, it's down in this brown area. Correct. Okay. Because that's where the water course is. And you, what you're drawing is showing, what you're determining is at the end of this yellow line. That is the top bank. There's the second bank. Yes. Okay, but this is where the question of what bank are we supposed to be measuring by? Because you're going if by... If I may say, I mean, that's, that to me is a bit irrelevant if we have a definition of the top of a bank that Mr. Pose has already stated and, and looked at agreed to. I have it. No, no, please, no. Please, no, please saying it. No. But it's just that we have this yard of slope at two different values. So, right. right. So this isn't really relevant. B is not accurate to what the testimony is then because what Mr. Puz has indicated from the township's position is it's down here somewhere and you're saying it's up here somewhere. And Anne has testified that she agrees with Matt's determination as to where the, the bank is. However, Anne has also testified that the buildable area stops at where the end of the yellow line is. So we're moving closer to the bank where the property drops off. Okay, but, but the buildable line and the bank line are two different things in this case. Because the, the reason we're here is FEMA changed something. Yes. And so, so the question is, from what, what, what Mr. Puz's the testimony is indicating to us is that your 12 and a half feet dimension is incorrect and it's probably closer to Mr. Redinger's 28 and a half to 30 feet if dimension. If you're measuring from the stream bed, yes, it, the 28 is more well, accurate. No, I mean, I think we have a township official who has said this is top of bank. That, that's the only thing that matters in my view. I mean, just because there's another line, it's a fence line, it is what it is. We need a determination. The township's point of view, and I don't know if you agree, Ann, I mean, Matt's point of view is that the 
it is 31.5 plus, plus or minus. We're going to call it 28.5. That's what you're calling top of bank. So the other bank, ridge line, whatever we're going to call it, is irrelevant. It's a discussion point, but it's irrelevant. And what's your perspective? What, do you agree that that's top of bank is where Matt has said it is? I agree that that's top of the street bank, yes. I believe that if you excavate in the proximity that they're requesting here mm -hmm. to the top of this hillside, okay. that you're looking at the same dangers of this coming down, possibly causing more of a problem okay. within the creek bed. Okay. That's what my point is. I do agree with Matt with where the top of the street bank, that's where the water goes to. Sure. Where vegetation starts and it's established. Yeah. But I still would have a problem with them building this close with any liability, whether it be to the swimming, to, you know, to anybody. My, my question, or Matt, go ahead. I just, I just wanted to add, uh, <clears throat> I believe the purpose of that 50 foot uh, buffer, let's say, a 50 foot setback, is because the banks are difficult to, to establish, as well as the fact that they're not, the, you know what I mean? There's some ambiguity there, and with the land itself being mm -hmm. possibly weakened from the forces of the water. Mr. Redinger, would you be opposed to getting an actual survey that would actually give us exact dimensions so that we're not dealing with what two different parties, and both, I hate to say it this way, are both representing the township, but they're disagreeing. And if something is granted, it would have to be very specific, as we indicated very early on, that if it's even off by seven inches, you could be in violation. My question to you, would you be opposed to us continuing this hearing for you to get an actual survey done to answer all of our questions? So that... You think you go after the process? Okay. So that we would be dealing with actual facts instead of testimony that there's no, there's no fact except other people's opinion, in this case is the way I'm going to say it. Mr. Chairman, um, in discussions with the township, we're agreeable to a variance with conditions. That being the signing of an erosion and floodplain release, and also conducting a geotechnical survey that shows that the pool won't impact the bank and cause the bank to fall away, or cause increased erosion, or a soil test, and has more information as to how that is performed. But that's not up to the zoning board to, we could put those in as conditions, mm -hmm. but what we're really being asked is whether to allow or not allow it to be built within some dimensions that were actually created just six years ago. If he was doing this seven years ago, we wouldn't be here. Correct, Mr. Coos? Because it would have predated this change in an ordinance. I believe so, yes. That's, that's where I'm coming from on this right now. It's somebody, again, somebody wrote some other testimony. Now, it would be up to Mr. Redinger if he'd be willing to agree to those kinds of things. And you could ask him that, but uh, so I'll leave that open. In my opinion, I, I'm not sure what's involved with that, honestly. Uh, you know, we've got history on our side here. Uh, you know, this excavation is 120th the size of my house. 120th. We've got other pools in the neighborhood uh, that are close to bank. We don't see problems. Uh, I just, I try, you know, we've got to demonstrate history. That, that to me is better than, than most assessments that you're going to find. I understand, but but history could have predated this change in the ordinance. And we have to follow well, sure. today's rule. Well, sure, and it did. It did. I'm sure it did. So yeah, I'm just saying we have six, so we, successful history that it you know, from an issue standpoint, not that, hey, it was done before, let me do it now. It's just, from a success story, there's history. All right, but we, you know, there's a couple things that are being tossed around. The, the township is recommending uh, we consider something with, a, uh, with conditions. 
but I'm not even sure what all those conditions mean and what kind of financial impact those have right. on anybody. So do you have an idea what that would cost uh, anybody? Copy of the release that we've already prepared is a draft we have on hand. Uh, in terms of the geotechnical or soil test, I'm not, I do not have figures. Hey, Mr. Perhaps you have a question? Yeah, if you're gonna impose a condition on experience that certain tests be done, you have to address the subject of what constitutes passing the test. What happens if he doesn't? You can't just say take a test. You take a test, so what? And then you go to build the pool. The test is being administered for a reason. Presumably there's some result that the test would produce that would induce the township to oppose this, depending on what it is. You have to deal with all of that if you put that into your decision. And I don't know what this test is either. I don't know. Can you enlighten us on that? to what we would be looking for, we would be looking for a result that indicated to the township that the excavation in the pool would not create a Well, if risk. that's the case, then what I would suggest we do, if, the, if this test is agreeable, if the board wants to do this, property owner is willing to agree, we don't make a decision until you do the test see what the results are, maybe the township won't care. Maybe they'll withdraw their opposition if they get the results that they're hopeful to get. And that would remove this obstacle to building the pool. That would probably take, I assume, another month because we'd have to hold this case open until July. We would have to do this test. And can anybody inform Mr. Redinger what this test means? I mean, what what is, he's not familiar with it. I'm not, the board isn't. If we tell, if we hold this open, so a test can be conducted, we need to know what it is we're doing. The test would be a boring, more than likely. That would show you the strata of soils, the types of soils, the compaction of the soils, where the water table is, the likelihood of the soil to slump or fall oh. off. That sounds expensive. It is. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I, I can attest to that's probably a four thousand okay. dollar test. Is willing to bear the cost of that? My question is, you had mentioned briefly, you said uh, something to the effect of a, a soils test or, or other appropriate measures or, you know, having some flexibility. I mean, is, is the township amenable to something where it's, uh, you, you know, you, you basically go and take a test hole, right? And you verify soil type. I would not do that. I'm not a licensed geologist and okay. I'm not going to get all the strata that I would require. Mm -hmm. I'd have to dig a deep enough I, I think it need, going back to Mr. Perks, but it needs to be very specific. If, if this is going to become a condition, what is the condition that has to be met, and what what tests or who does he have to hire? What type of people would he have to hire, or would the township have to hire, or split the costs between the two of you to determine what it is you're looking for an outcome? Matt, uh, could I just speak to to Ms. Caparosa? And again, officially, we're going to need your name and address yeah. for the uh, record. My name is Matthew Waldinger.
Okay, you guys done caucusing? We are. Thank okay, you. What, can you inform us what you caucused about? Yes, I can. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we are amenable to granting the variance with conditions. And in further clarifying the conditions, um, I previously mentioned the erosion and floodplain release. That is still would remain a condition. And modifying the earlier discussion regarding a geotechnical or a soil test, um, if we were provided with a report from an engineer, a licensed engineer, indicating that the project would not create any issues and cause the bank to erode or fall away, that would be acceptable to the township. If I may, so first of all, I don't understand your first condition. What it, tell me exactly what it is you want there. Um, I have, we have prepared. Did you draft something? Yes. Can I see it? Mr. Waldinger has reviewed it and just wanted to read them. This is a release. <clears throat> Thank you. What, what, what am I looking at here? Is this the same release you often use? Yes, it's been, um, we ordinarily in the past have utilized a ravine release when some of the properties that are along a much more steep ravine, um, this is related to erosion and floodplain release. Well, so your condition is that Mr. Redinger would have to sign this. Yes. That's the condition. And provide the engineering report indicating. Well, I'm still on condition one. Certainly. Yes, the, okay. he would have to sign that as okay. a condition. Has he seen this yet? Has he seen this? This was just finalized today. Okay. And I don't know if Matt had previously provided a different version of this. Well, is that a yes or no? Is Mr. Well, has Mr. Redinger seen it? Either has or he hasn't. And no, I have not. Okay, so we don't know what he thinks. Well, I think in fairness to Mr. Redinger, he, you know, he's entitled to have an opinion on that sure. proposed condition, and he can't have one unless he's read this. And my suspect, suspicion is he'd have to probably consult with somebody, maybe a lawyer. Uh, about this? Whether or not our approval was with the condition? Well, they're asking us to approve it with the condition that he signed this. And I, he's entitled to comment on that, I think, in fairness. And he just got it. And it's a four page legal document. And he, we don't agree with that. Well, that, but then, then it's irrelevant. <laughs> um, it's true. But, but if you wanted to consider it as a potential condition, I think, in fairness, you would have to allow Mr. Redinger to opine on it and, st and review it, which obviously I don't think he can be expected to do tonight, given the nature of the document. Because I mean, it's a sure he can. You sure can. And then the second condition, uh, Lydia, was yes. The second condition was um, modifying our earlier discussion, but a providing an engineer's report from a licensed engineer indicating that the project would not uh, cause the bank to fall away or erode any further okay, because it, of the project. But if you're asking for that, could it actually be put in writing so he can get it answered specifically? So he'd go to somebody to get what you're asking specifically for so he wouldn't ask A or B. But then then if, if we all agree that we may do something, I'd also like to ask Mr. Mr. Redinger, would you be willing for us to keep this record open for you to be able to have time to review this document and any other things the township is recommending us to review and then come back next month and give further testimony? Well, I guess almost my opinion doesn't matter because this document forces that. I, you know, I, I, I do have one other question though. Could you build this and not have to have a variance? Could you locate it somewhere else on your property and not have to have a variance? But no, negative. Um, my house is within 50 feet of the, <laughs> of the bank. Uh, okay. It's just not possible. You, you don't want to put it in your front yard then. <laughs> I, don't, yeah, I don't think it's allowed. Oh. I would question, and you know, the ordinance itself, if the ordinance is written, the floodplain ordinance from FEMA is written so vaguely about structure 
then why, if it doesn't define structure, and anything can be a structure, including a pool, uh, a deck, many other things, right? So if it doesn't define what a structure is, and we often generalize and assume it's all of those things, and if it's a fair assessment to say that you can replace an existing structure with a new structure and not be, uh, and not have to be follow the ordinance, um, then why are we here? Why? Because my pool is a structure, my deck is a structure, there's structure, there's no further definition. There's no further definition of a structure in the ordinance. Now, I, I haven't read it myself, that's my understanding. Maybe somebody can clarify that. But there is no definition. So if we're allowed to replace an existing structure with a new structure that's no closer to the bank, then why can't I do that with my pool and my, my deck? They're both structure, there's no other definition of structure. It can be a little bit different conversation if you had a deck that was dilapidated, you were removing and replacing in kind with the deck in the same exact location. It'd Fair be enough. more of a conversation I'm, I'm kinda, there. You yeah. know, I'm, a I'm a practical person, so that would sure. be my view. But if we're gonna if we're gonna go down a path of okay, looking okay, at but let, 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 legal ra statements, rather than go down hypothetical paths, let's stay focused on what we're here for, and that is whether or not we can grant a variance because of this floodplain and FEMA and, and this creek bank and things. Uh, Mr. Puss, do you, you were gonna add something in there? Oh, I, I was just going to add the structure is defined. All right. We, 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 we don't need to do that. Okay. Right. So my question is, the township is asking for Mr. Redinger to review some requirements that I think, in all fairness, it would be better for him to, A, get legal opinion, no, I don't disagree. And, and to actually have the documents in front of him. But I'm also asking Mr. Redinger, are you amenable to that or would you like us to make a decision tonight? And if, if you're amenable to it, we'd ask uh, that we keep the record open to come back and hear testimony only about those very specific items that we're leaving open next month. Does he have, do we have to keep it open? Yes. Do we have to make the decision? No. Done? We, we're asking to keep this record open. The choices are we, make, we either make a decision, close a close record, but we can't close the record because I don't think you're going to agree to something without having it reviewed. Correct. And the other thing is we don't have specifically the document, that, uh, Article 2, that you're requesting him to meet in writing for him to go get reviewed. We, no, we have, I, I don't have a document with respect to the engineering report. That would be, um, we could certainly clarify the scope of what we would need in a report if we were to be agreeable to the project. Correct. And we could certainly clarify that. And that, that's what, that, I think it'd be fair to all no. parties to have clarification. Certainly. And that's, I, why we're, that's why we're trying to keep the record open so they can come back and give further testimony. But if they need it, I don't need to hear that they met it. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing he's got a timeline. When, 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 when the adjudication is written, all that's got to be part of the record. Okay. That's why, in that case. I do have some additional uh, questions with Matt Waldinger. He has some additional. Okay. If that's, that's acceptable. Fine. Thanks, Anne. Matt Waldinger again, 3608 West 26th Street. Uh, Mr. Waldinger, could you please state your position with the township? Yes, yeah. and I want to apologize to Ms. Caparosa because I know she's spent some time laying out a case here and I don't want to trample over it. But I just want to kind of feel a plane when, when I explain the position of the township. Um, first of all, as far as the, the top of bank, we have no argument with where the top of bank was. Where Mr. Redinger believes it is is where he and Mr. Puzz discussed and that is the top of bank. I guess just to clarify my statement a little bit, what I'm going to what I'm going to call their yard, I'll call the land. Our, our concern is um, where they're placing their pool. There isn't a whole lot of land left before it drops off towards the creek. And that the excavation and the placement of the pool may do damage in there, causing that land to slough away and then maybe exposing further erosion down the line, which would not only you know, be bad for the township, but would also be detrimental to the, the Redingers as well. So our concern and what we'd like to see is some assurance that if that land is excavated, that it does not harm the rest of their yard, does not make the land fall off. 
Um, and then again, the, the waiver, which I believe Mr. Puz mentioned to you in the past, that that's something that when people build close to a water course like this, the township typically asks, uh, uh, oftentimes requires them to agree to that just to hold the township harmless for any potential damage that may be caused by their actions building closer than where we would uh, normally allow. So the, those, are, that's the, those are the reasons for why the township's asking what it's asking. I have nothing further. Mr. Redinger, do you have any comments? Uh, no, I guess we're going to have to delay. I, I am not going to sign this legal uh, document and assume responsibility without uh, having the opportunity to review it thoroughly. Um, and, uh, and the other thing we're requesting is for the township to also put in writing to you specifically what condition two is so you can answer specifics of what it is. And that way everybody's on the same page. Mr. Perhaps? Yeah, I was going to suggest that very thing. I think it's incumbent on a township to provide Mr. Redinger and, my, and might as well provide it to the board as well with a clear statement of what this opinion you want is. Uh, what you know, I mean, if you're going to if you're going to ask an engineer to to give you an opinion, you're, he's going to want a clear statement of what his charge is, what he's being asked to opine on, because I only have the most general understanding of it here. It sounds to me like you're asking him to opine on whether or not this construction will destabilize Creek Bank. Put it in perhaps layman's terms, uh, and maybe that's all you need. But we I I, I don't want to have further discussion about whether or not the opinion is adequate, if, assuming we get one. And Mr. Redinger, you know, somebody's going to have to pay an engineer to do You're an engineer yourself, I, I take it. Um, OK. Um, yeah, we would need that. Mr. Redinger would need that to consider. consider. We'd, and we need to hear his position on whether, whether he objects to that condition, whether he accepts the condition, whether he pay to have it met or not. And he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to. I mean, you can make this decision without that. You know, you don't. Doesn't the, the waiver kind of offset the, the results of the test? If the results of the test say there might be a problem, but he's already taken on responsibility of it, what's the purpose of two for both? Uh, I, the, the reason is because there, there's the potential for damage beyond just Mr. Redinger's property. If it was just him taking responsibility for what may happen, to his pool, yeah, that, makes, that would be one. That, that makes but sense. The fact that, that the integrity of the bank could cause downstream implications. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That makes sense to me too. What this document does, just looking at it real quick, is this protects the township. This says that Mr. Redinger is building at his own risk, as far as this is concerned, and he shouldn't come in later and say, "Oh, you should have stopped me from doing this." But that's what it does, and that's not an unreasonable concern, I don't think. Um, and I think when you're when you have a chance to look mm -hmm. at it, you're going to see that that's basically what it does. But the second issue is this professional opinion that, that there's not going to be a problem. That's out of my level of expertise. But I would say Mr. Redinger would have to, he, he's certainly entitled, if the board is considering imposing these conditions, put it that way, if you're even thinking about it, I think Mr. Redinger is entitled to think about this document before he signs it. And I think he's entitled to have a written statement of what this opinion is that the township wants him to get from somebody. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, I mean, that, that's only reasonable. Uh, but what about the cost? I mean, it's, this is not going to be cheap, I wouldn't imagine, to hire uh, a firm to come in and do that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, is town, I mean, is, is this something the township's going to pay for? You'd have to take that up with the township. Uh, if the cost is something you don't wish to bear and the township is unwilling to help you with that, then your position would probably be you would not adhere to the condition. So you, you wouldn't accept it, and if it's imposed, you won't meet it. I mean, I, that's, I guess, would jeopardize the project, potentially. I don't know. It depends on what the board does with it. I can't speak for the board. I don't know what they're going to do with it. But maybe, maybe the board wants to know what the cost is before they consider whether it's reasonable or not. Conditions have to meet the test of reasonableness. You have the ability to oppose reasonable conditions, reasonable as you define them in the context of the case. Uh, and I don't know, have any, this might cost $1,000 or it might cost 10 I don't know. Well, without knowing what the condition is, how, how, how extreme or not extreme, Mr. Walden, or 
Uh, yeah, if I may, um, on behalf of the township, I would commit to us having information to Mr. Redinger by one week from today, July 1st, detailing what we would need the report to convey. I do have a feeling it would likely be sooner than that, but just because I'm not 100% sure, I'd, I'd say a week. If that's agreeable to the board, we would give the board the condition as well. Okay. Uh, so that they well, could review my, it. My suggestion is that the, the case be continued to July, um, at, at which time the parties come back specifically prepared to address on Mr. Rediger's part whether he objects to this or not, and whether or not, uh, presumably, we have information on what this condition two would cost, whether or not Mr. Rediger feels he can absorb that or not, or whether he's been able to reach some arrangement with the township for the expense. I mean, I don't know. Those are all things that could happen outside. Who gave this, this, uh, those aren't those aren't the board's issues. If, if this is going to be put out, the township's going to put a document together. Mr. Redinger and uh, the township would have that. We'd have a copy of it, but then they're, they're going to work out what would be required and how it would be required and what type of a license surveyor or engineer or whatever would have to be required to meet the requirements. Whoever they hire is, isn't any problem for how they come to that conclusion. If, if anybody, Mr. Redinger could say, I'm not doing it. And then, then we'd have to take into consideration what we'd want to do as a board. Yeah, and you don't have to impose that condition. I'm just saying leave the record open and see if they could, see if there's a way through this. And if there isn't, there isn't. That's all I'm suggesting. Sir Rediger, are you okay with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, I don't have a, a, any great options here. To me, it's uh, uh, honestly, I feel, in my opinion, uh, a little over the top, but uh, because of the history, I mean, it, I know the neighborhood, I know the bank, I know it, it's, it's strong here, nothing going on there. So um, it seems a little wasteful to me, but uh, if that's what the township needs, then. Uh, I think we'll look into it further, Let's find out what the okay. cost is, if, and, and, and if the township is willing to pay. And if the township is not willing to pay or to, uh, to share the cost, then, and, and if the cost is uh, above what I can afford, then uh, the next meeting I may come back and say, we're not willing to do that. Um, please then, make your decision based that, on the information we provided. And, and that's, that's all we're asking, because exactly. we, our choices are we make a decision yeah. on what we heard tonight, or or we wait to go another month and see. And again, when we come back next month, we would only take testimony on the two documents that are being discussed tonight, which is this uh, erosion and floodplain general release, mm -hmm. and then the engineering type document. So and that we'd be solely only on those two items. So if, if both parties are agreeable to that, and the board's agreeable to that, That's where we'll probably continue yep. this case. Okay, well, thank you for your time. So we're over two. Okay, now, <laughs> if anybody's watching or anybody would like to call in, we'll give you about 30 seconds. Ms. Redinger? Well, yeah, I, just, I should say one more thing. I have discussed, just for the record, because so you, if you're not going to discuss anything else next time, I just wanted to clarify. I have discussed it with my three adjacent neighbors, and they're all in favor, so I, so I don't expect anybody to be calling in. So. That's fine. That's we fine. appreciate that comment yes. as well. Yes, and we're at the end of Final Jeopardy. Jeopardy. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's very seldom we ever go over two. Um, our third appeal is Appeal 20-17, Thomas B. Hagen, for property located at 5727 Grub Road, asking for a variance to construct an enclosure wall in excess of four feet in front of the building line in the RR Rural Residential District Index 512-062. Name and address, please. My name is Jeff Kidder. I'm with Kidder Architects, 201 French Street, uh, Erie 16507. I'm here tonight on behalf of my client, Tom Hagen, who, is, um, who we are working with on a proposed entrance uh, gate assemblage of brick and slide a gate for his driveway to his residence at 5727 Grub Road. Um, Mr. Hagen's property there is about four and a half acres and he also owns the adjacent properties to the north and south and um, controls the front. Excuse me one second. 
There's some. There's too much clutter in my old head. Thank you. Do you want me to get close? Uh, Mr. Hagen has lived at this residence for 57 years. He was recently advised by your insurance security uh, that he should have a way to control uh, vehicle access onto his property. So we've been working on a design for a gate for the driveway. Um, we came up with the design. I reviewed it with Matthew. Um, he uh, reviewed the basically the zoning ordinance that says any fencing enclosures along the front property line cannot exceed four feet in height. Um, so we're here to ask if our design is submitted to you in uh, with the existing condition photos and the photos with the gate and the drawings and plans. Uh, if we could get a variance to um, construct what we show that is basically um, a sliding aluminum picket fence that goes from five to six feet in height at the middle. On each side of the fence are brick um, structures, I will say, that have a pier up close in front that are four feet high, a curving wall that goes back to piers that are on each side of the driveway that are six foot seven feet high. On top of those piers are light fixtures that match other light fixtures already on the property. And um, as you'll see from the photos, immediately to the right and left of the driveway is mature landscaping. Um, we're just looking to insert this um, at the current driveway. Okay. Mr. Pruz, I have a question. Uh, Mr. Kidder, if I understand you correctly, you say the height is six feet seven inch plus the lights? Right. If you look at the elevation, gate elevation drawing. So my question to the township, do the lights count? Yes, I, they're oh. part of the... The, uh, so it would be a, more than six foot seven so inches. How higher the lights? Yeah. Right. The top of the light fixture is eight, eight 11. foot eleven. So, yeah, so we would asking, be asking. You're asking for eight foot eleven. Okay. Right. Okay. If this request was denied, what would you do? We would design a gate that was four foot high, so it would comply. If, if I may, Jeff, I, I assume the reason for the. Well, you mentioned that the reason for, the reason for the for the project. Fundamentally, is security, but mm -hmm. I can understand that. Um, but the reason for the variance request is primarily cosmetic. It's an aesthetic. Or aesthetic, I guess yeah. you would call it, not cosmetic. But, okay. That's what I thought. And um, I, I, I didn't present it as evidence, but you can drive pretty much all around Mill Creek Township and see other driveways that have brick pier structures with light fixtures on them. So I don't, yeah. And I, I don't know if they went through the process or not, but we're just, we're, we're, we're going through the process. Mr. Tanner, do you have any questions? I do not. Ms. Smith? Nope. Nothing else? Thank you. Township have anything with this? Do you have anything else you'd like to enter into testimony? I do not. And you don't want us to continue this, do you? <laughs> I'm going to go over three. <laughs> I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> don't answer that question. So let, the board will take a little bit of time uh, to kick this one around, and hopefully we'll have an answer shortly for you. Oh, I, I forgot. Uh, is there anybody in virtual land that would like to comment on this case? And again, we'll give you a, a few seconds here. To see if the magic phone rings. 833-1111, extension 380. I feel like I should be giving away tote bags and soliciting contributions, <laughs> like a QLN Megathon or something. This is, um, what, what's that, uh, shopping network? Yeah, uh, yeah the shopping, shopping, shopping network. network. Oh, we only have four of these left. Call that. I got 700 of these left. That's right. The sold out. Got three free architectural designs. <laughs> For the first three callers. 
Okay, we have no phone calls. So we're gonna maybe huddle here. Yeah, why don't you do it right we'll, there? We only have one huddler. Get too close. Okay, let the record reflect it at 843. We've returned as it relates to appeal 20 15. We will continue. Appeal 20 16. We will continue. And appeal 20 17. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve appeal 20 17. All those in favor of approving, or I'm sorry, do I have a second? I'll second. All those in favor of approving 20 17, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 20-17 has been approved. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. <laughs>